Welcome back everyone. Hi, if you're new, I'm Tori and today I am so excited to share with you the last video of 2022. Today I'm going to be taking you through the entire reading year. We're going to be doing a year in review. I'm going to take you through all of the stats for the year. We're going to be talking about the number of books, the number of pages read, the most popular book, the least popular book. And I'm going to take you through each month and tell you the number of books read in that month, the average rating for the month. And then after we come out of the stats, I also want to share with you where I got a lot of my books from this year. And then at the very end of the video, I'm going to take you through every single book that I read in 2022. So we have a lot to get into, get comfortable, and I think this is going to be a really fun video. A little bit bittersweet though, because I just cannot believe 2022 has flown by as quickly as it has, but it has been a great reading year. I was so thankful to be able to share that with all of you. And I think this is going to be a really fun video and a nice little send off for the 2022 reading year. So I hope you enjoy this. Let's get into the video. So I have my laptop right here. I have my Goodreads open. So I'm gonna be kind of like looking down, looking up throughout the entire video as I go through my year in review. I got the basic stats from Goodreads, but I also threw in some stats of my own that I wanna take you through as well. So at the time of filming this video, I have read 62 books in 2022. I'm currently reading one more. I'm reading Pines right now by Blake Crouch and I'm like 15% or a little bit more into that book. So I think I can finish that before January 1st. I'm pretty sure I can. I didn't include that in my like official stats. So aside from my current read, I have officially read 62 books. And those 62 books throughout the year came to a total of 25,946 pages. So not too shabby. The shortest book I read this year was 112 pages and that was Life is Strange Dust, which was a graphic novel. And this was by Emma Vicelli. And the illustrators for this book were Claudia Leonardi and Andrew Andrea Izzo. The longest book that I read this year was 980 pages and that was the Whopper that was Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J Maas and this was the seventh and final book in the Throne of Glass series. My average book length for the year was 418 pages. That was the longest book length I have ever had in any given year. In the past it's been like 340, 360. Last year I did get up to 390 but 418 that's just mind-blowing to me. That's kind of cool. The most popular book that I read in 2022 was The Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan and this is book one in the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series and that was shelved by 3,731,504 people. And then the least popular book that I read this year was 36 Streets by T.R. Knapper and that was shelved by 1,643 people. Let's get into my average rating for the year. This is what was really exciting to see. My average rating for 2022 was a 3.5 five that is the highest it has ever been and just if you guys are wondering i only rate books just for the purpose of goodreads it's like a quick nice visual for me to see when i'm like maneuvering through my shelves and my profile and you know gathering together books for recommendations and things like that it's just really quick and easy to see but when i talk about books on the channel when i'm doing wrap-ups or recommendations you've probably noticed that i don't you know give star ratings on the channel just because I feel like stars don't fully represent my thoughts on a book and then a lot of times on Goodreads I'm going back and changing ratings all the time and just moving on from that 52% of the books I read this year were written by male authors and 48% were written by female authors. Just thinking about 2023 I feel like this number is going to change quite drastically next year. I would be really curious to see how that percentage like balances itself out. Just off the top of my head I have a lot of books lined up by male authors in 2022 in 2023 so I just have so many series that I want to start so many series that I want to continue and I think that number is going to be pretty heavily skewed toward male authors. So in 2022, most of the authors that I read this year were new to me. I'm not counting debut authors because they were new to everybody, but this was the year I finally read authors like Robin Hobb, John Mars, Justina Ireland, Jason Reynolds, Nick Cutter, China Mieville, Adrian Tchaikovsky, Mary Robinette Kowal. So there were so many authors this year who were just brand new to me, which was very exciting. This year I read 18 books that were the first book in a series or a duology trilogy. And of those 18, I decided not to continue on with seven of those series. But aside from that, there are 11 others that I either did enjoy or I'm still kind of on the fence about continuing on with but at some point I will probably 
make my way through you know the rest of those series and so I'll put those 11 on the screen too. Now let's get into the worst most surprising and best books of the year. I have videos about all three of these categories so I will leave that linked somewhere if you want to go check out those videos but I did pull out like one book each for the purpose of this video. So the worst book I read in 2022 was Book of Night by Holly Black no competition there. The most surprising book I read this year was Lagoon by Nettie Okorafor and the best book that I've read in 2022 was Morning Star by Pierce Brown. Now let's get into something kind of fun here. This is going to be the books read per month and my average star rating for each month. These might be a little bit off because I don't always update. <laughs> Goodreads. I mean, I'm on Goodreads a lot, but for some reason I don't always update a book like right after I finish it. So some of these are probably a little bit off by like a couple of weeks or so to when I actually finished it. But to the best of my knowledge, this is what the breakdown looks like. In January, I read eight books and the average star rating that month was 3.1. In February, I read four books and the average was 4.5 stars. In March, I read five books and it was a three star average rating. In April, I also read five books and that was an average of 3.2 stars. In May I also read five books and that was an average of 3.6 stars. In June I read four books and that was an average star rating of 4.5. July was six books with an average rating of 3.3. That was the month I read Book of Night and that brought down the rest of the month pretty significantly actually. In August I read five books and that was an average star rating of 4.4. In September, this is, September was pretty terrible in terms of the rating. In September, I read six books and I had an average star rating of 2.2 stars. September was the worst reading month by far. Like overall, the reading year was really good, but there was just something particularly annoying about the month of September. That was the month I read Engines of Empire and Hidden Pictures like back to back and both of them ended up on my worst books of 2022 list. And then right after I finished those two books, I read Babel by R.F. Kuang. Babel was fine. It is the kind of book though where the more I think about it and the more it sits with me the less I like it. So aside from those three that I didn't really get on with, I did read The Passengers by John Mars in September which I really enjoyed. The Passengers tried so hard to save the month of September but then I closed out the entire month with Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher. I think I read that like the very last day of September. I did not like <laughs> Nettle and Bone at all and so that just also contributed to the very very low rating that month. And then moving into October, I read five books and my average star rating was three. In October, I read two of my favorite books of the year. I read Frankenstein by Mary Shelley and The Good House by Tanana Reeve Unfortunately for the month of October, I read Ruination by Anthony Reynolds and similar to Engines of Empire and Hidden Pictures, Ruination made my worst books of 2022. And so that also contributed to the overall kind of lower rating in October. And then last month for November, I read five books and I had an average rating of 3.4 stars. This was a solid month. November was the month I wrapped up Abaddon's Gate by James S.A. Corey. I read Assassin's Apprentice and I also read The Spare Man. So that was a very enjoyable reading month overall. And then in this month in December, I read four books and I have an average star rating on Goodreads of 4.5. This was a very strong reading month overall. I read The City in the City at the beginning of the month and that ended up making my best books of the year list. And then I rounded out the rest of December with two other amazing reads. I finished The Mask of Mirrors by M.A. Carrick for Tom Topple, which I loved so much. And then I also finished Kingdom of Ash. So that rounds out the reading year with 62 books and an average of like reading five books a month. Five books a month has been pretty normal for me, but I am going to have to up that just a little bit in 2023 because I want to challenge myself to read 75 books. So now let's get into where I got my books from in 2022. I don't film a lot of book hauls at all. I think there's only like one, maybe two. I think there's only one. There's only one on this channel. Even though there's only one and I'm not really filming book hauls, that does not mean I'm not buying them. I, guys, I stay in bookstores. Like even pre-booktube, I have always loved browsing bookstores and coming home with a handful of books and I just I do that all the time. Over the course of 2022 I have accumulated uh, quite a few books. I have definitely gotten more books this year than I actually read so that should tell you something but I love buying books and I'm just so fortunate that we have so many incredible bookstores in Chicago. So the place where I got the majority of my books from this year were from the same handful of bookstores around the city. The first is Open Books, Afterwards, Unabridged Bookstore, and then The Bookseller. If you're ever in Chicago on just a random Saturday or Sunday and you stop in one of those four places there's a high possibility you might run into me. Aside from those, a good chunk of my books this year also came from thrift books. I'm a huge, huge thrift books user. I feel like at this point, 
someone needs to just delete the app from my phone. I'm always on thrift books. I love browsing thrift books. Sometimes if I wake up in the middle of the night, I'll just like be scrolling through thrift books and then five days later, boom, I got a new book. Most of my books in my collection are used and thrift books is responsible for a lot of that. And so is open books. The next big place this year for me was Barnes and Noble. Like, let's talk about that. I went to Barnes and Noble more in 2022 than I think I have in my entire life. Barnes and Noble isn't really the place where I go to like relax and browse around and things like that. I'm usually going in Barnes and Noble with a purpose, like with something very specific in mind or to get a new release, something like that. I got pretty much all of my 2022 releases from Barnes and Noble, like The Justice of Kings, Ordinary Monsters, The Blade of Faith, Bloodmarked. I got The Final Strife from Barnes and Noble, The Witcher hardcover books. So the majority of my 22 releases, if not all of them, I think came from Barnes and Noble this year. So, so being in was pretty significant for me this year in a way that it has never been before. And then finally, the last place that I got a few of my books from this year was Amazon. Every year I've been so good about ordering less and less from Amazon. This year I think was the best. I only ordered books that I just could not find anywhere else. I remember I bought Illborn from Amazon. I got this book called Dark Theory. And then the last one that I can recall was Sinless of Sins by Josiah Bancroft, which is book one in the Books of Babel series. And aside from this series gaining so much popularity, I could not find book one anywhere. I would see book two, I would randomly see like book four, sometimes I would see books three and four, but no matter where I went, book one was just never available. So I was like, you know what, whatever, I'm just gonna order from Amazon. So I think I did really well this year putting a serious serious cap on Amazon which was nice. I think that is everything. That is probably the most comprehensive year in review I think I've ever done before. So now I'm just going to tell you every single book that I read in 2022 and I'm not going to give you my thoughts on them. Um, I have so many videos from this year talking about these books so this is just going to be really quick. I'm just going to tell you what they were. So 62 books here we go. I read Spin by Robert Charles Wilson, Lagoon by Nettie Okorafor, The Prey of Gods by Nikki Drayden, Life is Strange, Dust by by Emma Vicelli, Claudia Leonardi, and Andrea Izzo. False Witness by Karen Slaughter. Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds. Empire of Storms by Sarah J. Mass. Finley Donovan Knocks Him Dead by El Cosimano. Behind the Throne by KB Wagers. A Closed and Common Orbit by Becky Chambers. Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J. Mass. All You Need is Kill by Hiroshi Sakurazaka. Mickey Seven by Edward Ashton. Dead Silence by S.A. Barnes. Upgrade by Blake Crouch. Hunt the Stars by Jesse Mihalik. The Kaiju Preservation Society by John Scalzi, Morning Star by Pierce Brown, Only Human by Sylvain Nouvelle, Brothers Ruin by Emma Newman, Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff, The Black God's Drums by P. Jelly Clark, The Lightning Thief, the Sea of Monsters and The Titan's Curse, all by Rick Riordan. The Blood Trials by Annie Davenport. Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. 12 Kings in Shara Kai by Bradley P. Beaulieu. 36 Streets by T.R. Knapper. The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. Book of Night by Holly Black. Winter's Orbit by Everina Maxwell. The Final Strife by Sara El Arifi. Recursion by Blake Crouch. Fina by Nino Cipri. Tower of Dawn by Sarah J. Mass. Children of Time by Adrian Tchaikovsky. Certain Dark Things by Silvia Moreno Garcia. The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson, Dread Nation by Justina Ireland, The Justice of Kings by Richard Swan, Hidden Pictures by Jason Reculak, Engines of Empire by R.S. Ford, Babel by R. of Kwong, The Passengers by John Mars, The Troop by Nick Cutter, Nettle and Bone by T. King Fisher, The Last Astronaut by David Wellington, The Chestnut Man by Soren Weistrup, The Good House by Tanana Reeve Du, Ruination by Anthony Reynolds, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, Hell Divers by Nicholas Sansbury Smith, Sea of Tranquility by Emily Sanders, St. John Mendel, Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb, Abaddon's Gate by James S. A. Corey, The Spare Man by Mary Robinette Kowal, The City and the City by China Mieville, Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J. Mass, The Mask of Mirrors by M.A. Carrick, and Wanderers by Chuck Wendig. So that is it, you guys. This has been a really good reading year for me. This year, I continued to read a lot of the kind of sci-fi that I enjoy, but I also feel like I was finding my footing a little bit as an adult fantasy reader and finally starting to lean into some bigger you know, fantasy series that I had been so curious about for so long. And then I even dabbled into some newer fantasy books that had been on my TBR a little bit more recently, like 12 Kings and Shara Kai and The Mask of Mirrors. I felt really good about that. And I'm so excited to see what's on the horizon in 2023 as I keep developing my tastes as a fantasy reader. At the end of 2023, I just know I'm gonna be so happy to say that I have even more fantasy series under my belt and that my love for science fiction just kept getting stronger as the year went on. And I am just so 
excited to take that journey with you guys in the new year. So thank you guys so much for an incredible 2022, not only as a reader, but as a creator, I am just so blown away by your excitement for what I'm reading and just sharing your enthusiasm for what you've been reading and loving throughout the year. And just even beyond all of that, I feel like I've gotten these just incredible glimpses into you guys' lives um, over the course of 2022. In the comments, I've been seeing that you guys have been studying for different things, that you've gotten married, that you've graduated, that you bought houses, that you're traveling. I've learned what countries some of you all are watching from. It's just been so amazing to witness. And that is just something that I did not expect when I started this channel. So from the absolute bottom of my heart, thank you all so much for an incredible 2022. I am wishing you all a happy new year. Please Please stay safe out there and I will see you in 2023. Take care.